Amen. Isn't it good to know that we can come into this sacred place and honor the name of Jesus and to sing praises to how great our God is. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Grace to you and peace from God, who is and was and is to come. Amen. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and ruler of kings on earth, the grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints, each one of you. Amen. We welcome each one of you uh, as you come into this place. Those of you who are at home, relaxing, uh, watching us on our live stream service, we welcome you as well. And we come into the house of the Lord to lift up the name of Jesus. Uh, just a few announcements. Our annual conference, the Virginia Annual Conference, will begin this coming week. I think it's June 16th through the 18th. So those of you who are in this area, if you'd like to go, I'm sure there's a provisions made that you can just drop in for a few moments. Or if you want to volunteer, they're still calling for volunteers to do things as familiar as driving golf carts. Amen. <laughs> Um, I thought about it, but then I thought about what if my golf cart should break down way down in the parking lot and I'd have to walk back. So I'll leave that to those of you who are much younger and much more skilled at driving. And then we ask you to uh, sign up for our the reading of scriptures on Sunday mornings uh, on the sign-up sheet uh, in the back. Um, we hope that you will take advantage of that opportunity. Um, who knows what God has in store for us as he chooses you to read the scripture for us. Would you now join with each of us as we call one another to worship? Would you please stand? The name of the Lord is Mac Majestic. The mountains tower and the seas roar to the praise of God. When we look at the heavens, we rejoice in God. The moon, stars, planets, all other systems are alive to us. Come, let us shout our praise to God. Lord, Lord thank, thank you for, for this awesome creation. creation. Amen. Amen. And our opening prayer. Let us pray. Spirit of wisdom and hope, we witness your glory in the heavens and hear your call to us. We are sometimes overwhelmed by the thought of your compassionate care. Open our hearts this day to hear and respond in joy to your call, that we may serve you faithfully all our days. Amen. Our hymn of praise this morning is hymn number 662, All Creatures of Our God and King.
Amen. You may be seated. And before Karen Rickett comes to read our scripture, we would ask you all to pray our prayer for illumination. Let us pray. Calm us now, O Lord, into a quietness that heals and listens. Open wounded hearts to the balm of your word. Speak to us in clear tones so that we might feel our spirits leap for joy and skip with hope as your resurrection witnesses. Amen. The Old Testament lesson is from Song 8. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands and you put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The second reading is from Romans chapter 5, 1 through 5. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much, Karen. I'm not sure what system we'll use this morning to have you express your joys and concerns, but I'm open to whatever. Oh, I see that, uh, Mary. Amen. All right, do we have any concerns this morning that we need to uh, express to the community? What's his last name? Near. Deer? Near. Oh, near. D-A-G-R. Betty and John Near. Prayers for Ann Hudgens. And I'd like to send out prayers to uh, the family of Alan Michael Costley. Uh, in Maryland, who, when I was a much younger person, I used to stay at Michael's house. Now, mind you, the family had, eventually they had about 11 children. But there was always room for me, and I remember Michael, when he was young, 
We used to tease him because he couldn't say words with a W. Uh, he would always pronounce it with an L. And our favorite saying was, when will the wind go over the water? And he would, he would lend little Lynn go over the little. But I praise God for him for uh, the, most of his life. He was a singer of gospel music and sang uh, more pure even than Sam Cooke. So we express our condolences to the family and uh, wish him Godspeed. And prayers for Jerry, our secretary, as she um, continues to work here, and she has asked to cut back on her days due to gas prices. And so she's going to be working in the office Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, from 10 to 4, or maybe a little bit later. I second that emotion. Do we have the vote? It's been approved. <laughs> Amen. And I certainly want to send out well wishes to Don Blagg. Uh, he's recently, I think, came out of retirement. And uh, that's not the time you want to have these knees replaced. I, I'm dealing with a left knee issue myself, <laughs> so I know exactly what he's going through. It, it's, it's not easy uh, standing for a prolonged time you know, as you, particularly as you come out of retirement. Any joys? Well, I have one joy. It's no longer Saturday the 11th. It, today is Sunday the 12th, so that means that the Lord has spared me one more day. <laughs> now, I, I'm also thankful that I'm able to stand before you this morning. Um, I don't know whether because of the sermon title I picked or what, but the devil has been working overtime. And the devil didn't want me to preach his sermon so bad that he went over to Microsoft and kind of messed up my account. And I was typing, and I saw some strange things happening. Then a little note that says, uh, soon all the features of this app will be, I mean, this program will be taken away. And trying not to give in, I got up this morning again and tried again, but my word processor was not working. So I pray that God will piece together a sermon that I have used in the past that will be apropos to our situation here. Amen? Amen. The devil is still a liar. Any other joy? I said we should all be happy we're alive. Amen. <laughs> you know, considering the, the current uh, things that are happening in the world, uh, we don't pay much attention to it, but we, we all need to be playing, praying for Vladimir Putin. For whatever reason, uh, they keep talking about blowing up the entire East Coast and all those things. Now, I'm not having any of that, and my God is bigger than the devil, so I just believe that the Lord will pre prevail in that situation. And I'm told that the uh, actors uh, for The Chosen in Texas, even though they had experienced excessive heat, uh, that they all went through their um, the casting and the acting very well. So we are thankful for that, 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 that movie might continue so that others might be blessed and come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord God, you who watches over us even throughout the silence of the night. We thank you for this morning's rising and for our reasonable amount of good health. We pray that your spirit will be with us as we continue to navigate 
this place called Earth, this small global village that seems to be shrinking all the time. But Lord, we know that you have provided for us this place, and you promised not to leave us. We come to you, O oh God, that you might heal these persons who are sick in body, uh, go out into the hinterlands, the, the wayward places, Lord, and heal those who have a broken heart. And then, Lord, uh, we know that you will not forget about us. We are in need of your blessings, Lord. Uh, we want this house to be a house where persons can come and know that Jesus is here. We thank you, Lord, for those who have traveled even long distances all the way from Florida and have come to be with us. We ask you to bless Eddie and Connie and all that they need to do on this end of the world. Bless each one of us, Lord, that we might be able to do your will and not our own. We ask all of this, even as you heal and bless and guide and nurture and teach each one of us in your ways. We ask it all in Jesus Christ, our Lord's name. Amen. Would you join me now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught each of his disciples to pray? Saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Would you stand as we cite or read the modern affirmation of faith? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as a divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love, as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord, to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. Our hymn of preparation this morning is hymn number 368, My Hope is Built.
the ground is sinking sand. Amen. Would you pray with me for a moment? Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me through, O oh God, this time of preaching. I ask, Lord, that you will give me the strength to deliver your word. And I ask, Lord, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts will be acceptable in your sight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. From Blueprint to Blessing. When I was serving as the lay leader of my home church, I was introduced to this sermon title. And Dr. Evans Crawford, previously the dean of the chapel at Howard University, during my undergraduate years, preached a sermon by that title. Little did I know then that in the future he would serve as my preaching professor and mentor, and I would have the privilege of becoming one of his pastors at the Asbury United Methodist Church in Washington, D.C. And having been inspired by his sermon before I entered the ministry, I consider it a blessing to honor and remember him by borrowing his title. Yet I assure you that any similarities between his sermon and mine are purely accidental. We are, of course, aware that a blueprint is an architect's drawing of a building, and it is usually, as the name implies, rendered in blue ink. Perhaps blue was chosen to imitate the parameters of our lives. In our reality, the sky above appears blue and the sea below us at least used to be blue. The heavens above and the seas beneath seem to define the extremes of our lives. Whatever we do, Wherever we go, our existence, like a blueprint, is laid out between those parameters, the sky and the sea. So I know that Sky and the sea denotes for most of us heaven and what's that other place? Hell, Hades, <laughs> or you might be right, Sister Karen. Earth anymore seems more representative of, of hell than we'd like to imagine. But thanks be to God, good still prevails even on earth. I know that we all have different concepts of both heaven and hell, those of us who even think about it at all. But I'm talking about another trip this morning, not a trip to heaven or not a trip to hell. A trip from the places where you are to the place or places you want to be. I'm talking about the journey that may sometimes start in hell, but which no longer passes that way. I'm speaking about a trip which may have started in the human gutters of despair, the brain-altering, mind-bending, Body snatching high of a marijuana joint. Well, I guess I'm giving marijuana a lot of credit. A snort of cocaine or, or the stupor of an alcohol induced hangover, but which has been redirected toward the street called straight and is now upward bound. 
talking about a trip that may have started in the stench pits of sexual overindulgence or on the main streets of a society drunk with its own perceived success. A trip that began hell-bound but is now a prepaid excursion with trials and tribulations to heaven. Notice I did not say that the trip was free. So don't leave here this morning with the notion that I said that the trip to heaven, or if you're going to that other place, is free. The trip will be with tribulations. Jesus said in John 16, 33, these things I have spoken to you that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. What comforting words. So as long as we live in this world, we will have trials and tribulations. As long as you and I draw up the plans for our lives, we are going to have times of testings and temptations. Too many times we falter when the rubber hits the road, though. Too many times the distance from the blueprint to the blessing is detoured by self-doubt, apathy, indifference, lack of commitment, or loss of heart. Too often we allow the world and all that in it is to interfere with the constructions of our lives in far too many trials and temptations are our faith falters. Our hope is lost whenever the going gets rough and, and the hills and mountains seem too hard to climb. Too often we let what we see with our eyes and think with our heads blind us to the omnipotent, omnipresent grace of God which is sufficient for all our needs. Oh, ye of little faith, don't you know that the distance between your blueprint and your blessings is just a few steps of faith? In mathematics, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Not so with faith. The long road of hope is overcome only when at the end of the road, faith takes over. That's when you, you get your second wind. The long road of patience only seems to get longer when trials come. Until an extra measure of a thing called faith meets you in the desperate hours, sometimes even during the third watch of the night, and it stretches you out until you are able to endure just a little while longer. Just a little bit more. Oh, it's not easy to walk by faith. But if you walk by faith, all your blueprints can be transformed into blessings. If you walk by faith, all your dreams can be turned into realities. I said if you walk by faith, God's grace will be sufficient for all your needs. If you walk by faith, nothing, no thing is impossible. My Bible says, for by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. And by faith, Abraham, when, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive as an inheritance, 
obeyed. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. He moved by faith. Problem is, some of us, uh, because we walk by sight, are still looking for a physical city, some material manifestation of the promise that God has made to us. In Hebrews 11 and 6 it says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Fellow believers, what are the blueprints of your life? And who is the architect? Are your blueprints found in the pages of Holy Scripture or between the covers of a psychology book? Do you accept the pages of the Wall Street Journal as your plan of success, or, or do you look on the Bible as your prescription to glory? Is television the diary of your own crazy and confused life? Or can you sit down and follow the words of this book called the Bible and say like Job said in the 23rd chapter and verse 12 of the book of Job. Neither have I gone back from the commandments of his lips, for I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. And no matter where you found your blueprint, without faith in God, any house, any church, any life, any foundation we lay, we must know that unless God, the preeminent architect, maker, and builder, builds the house, the laborer works in vain. You see, faith is the concrete substance of things hoped for, but, but beyond that, beyond any physical manifestation, beyond any great sign of success, beyond any human revelation, faith is the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the already but not yet desire, condition, or circumstance of your life that resists the temptation to turn back. One year I, I taught a Bible study uh, by James Moore. It says, if you find you're going in the wrong direction, turn around. Seems simple enough, but too often we begin a task or we begin a journey, and, and particularly as, as men folks, I, I'm going to confess that if not you all, certainly me. Sometimes I start going in the wrong direction. And, and, and rather than stop and assess my position or ask somebody, I'll keep on going until, uh, you know, hopefully God will put me in the right direction. Now that's a revelation that I ought not speak out in public, but my wife has some very tender and choice words for me sometimes. Like, I don't get you. <laughs> you, you just passed uh, a convenience store. W why don't you go in and ask somebody from this local area where you're going? Um, that makes too much sense. So I continue going until I, I, I either waste a lot of gas or a lot of time and I weave my way back out of that. I don't know, that's a habit that I'm trying to break.
Faith is the ounce of courage that goes beyond all human understanding. Faith is, is the distance in your spirit between the blueprint and the blessing. No matter what kind of plan you make, whatever your situation or circumstance, if you can hold on to your faith, sooner or later, mostly sooner, God will direct you onto a right path. Of course, you know, when you get my age, you know, uh, the, 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 the YouTube and television is a ready source of information. And we've been watching uh, programs called American Idol and uh, The X Factor in Australia or The Voice in England and so forth. It seems to be a continuous running. But it's so inspiring after we, we, we witness the singing of some of these folks. Some of them look like they should not ever be a singer, but somehow they've discovered their talents. And, 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 and somewhere in their lives, they've persevered to the point where they're able to improve their craft and begin to present themselves before the general public. Uh, it, it's amazing sometimes, but story after story that, that these young people is that, that you should never give up on your dreams. As long as you can continue dreaming and, and, and continue to work on uh, your journey with whatever God has given you, then all things are possible. I tell people, not every day, but many days, remember that the joy is always in the journey. It may take you a few more steps, physical steps, to get where you want to go, but if you put your faith in the constant and vigilant hands of God, wherever you set out to go, you will arrive. Many of us here in this church, even this church is a testament somewhere back in the history of this great edifice. Somebody sat down and, and, and began to plan and maybe even draw up blueprints or have somebody else draw up blueprints. And not only did they uh, factor in the size and the, the length and the width of this building, but they allowed for the saints of God and future generations to come into this place and receive the blessings of God Almighty. Sometimes we, we, we forget how great God is. And I can believe that some of the folks who sat down and made the plans had no idea of what Trinity would become in the year of 2022. A church that perhaps has taken a licking, but you keep on ticking. Can I get an amen? amen? The distance from between the blueprint and the blessing. And then our scripture reading this morning said that we can boast in the hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in our suffering. Because we think. No, that's not what it says. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. Sometimes we just synthesize all of that when we talk to young folks and you say, well, you just keep on living. Keep on going. Keep on in any journey that you undertake. And know that the longest journey begins with but a single step. And from that point, if you walk by faith, you can be confident that God will carry you through. Uh, too many of us are 
busy in our lives trying to walk around the obstacles that are placed in our way. Too, too, too many times we, we're tempted to go the long way around, when, but by faith, God can take us through our problems. You can now look back on your life and some of us remember when we were we small children wondering what life had in store for us. Some of us even ask our parents and grandparents and, and relatives uh, to give us direction so that we might not waste time or energy and be able to start off in the right direction. But most of us just kind of left home. Not so much because we had a great other place to go, but because God said to us, okay, it's time. I I've taught you for so many years. It's time that you go out into the world and begin to trust in the trustworthiness of God. And we're here because most of us learn somewhere along the way to trust in that trustworthiness. The distance between the blueprint and the blessing is always faith. I mean, I, I see what next Sunday is Father's Day. Amen, like I see some fathers and children and whoever it is. I say go out into all the world and invite those who you know or see or talk to every day. Why not bring them to Trinity? Is this not a place where your grandmothers and grandfathers and mothers and fathers came and labored in the faith to the point that they could provide a place for you, come and celebrate their accomplishment. I don't know what you tell your neighbor. Just tell them there's plenty of good room. We got room enough for you. Well, that's all I better say about that. But if you want to get from the blueprint, the plan of anything, that you conceive. I'm reminded that I learned a long time ago, it said that the human mind is capable of solving any problem that it formulates. If you can think it up, there is a solution for it. But you won't find that solution unless you are able to exercise that faith muscle let not your faith atrophy, even today, put it to the test. And God will provide. For Jesus said to us, if you ask anything in my name, believe me, I will do it. Problem is, some of us are asking for the wrong things. I keep, now this is true confession, one time I thought that uh, Publishers Clearinghouse was sending information just for me, calling me a winner, a potential winner. And then it started, okay, last month didn't work, this month didn't work, next month, gave it up. But they have the, the secret to enticing us to engage in buying their products. On the outside of the envelope, they say, winner soon to be announced. Uh, you have the winning number. Hey. Now, I will be distressed if after I do not send my notices in, which I've stopped doing, they come on the air and say, uh, Burton Mack, the winner. 
as I see it, if I stop indulging in that fantasy, I will be a winner every day. That's the way I see it. That's the way it ought to be. Perhaps there's somebody today who does not know Jesus in the pardoning of your sins. Or you know somebody who doesn't know. If that is the case, I, I commission you today to allow that person to come into your space and for you to minister sincerely to that need that brother or sister, that they might come to know Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. God is good all the time. Amen. Our I lost my pages. Our next hymn will be on the screen. 374, standing on the promises. 374, standing on the promises. And I'm going to sit on the promises right now. <laughs> Would you pray with me? Everlasting God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and ever live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Grant that we may always hold firmly and joyfully to this faith, and living in praise of your divine majesty, may finally be one in you who are three persons in one God, 
forever and ever. Amen. And now go in peace and be in Christ as Christ is in you. Amen.